The COVID-19 pandemic has affected the global economy and brought healthcare systems to the brink of collapse. The efforts to stop the spread of the virus has received unparalleled support from governments and rich philanthropists all over the world. In Ghana, infections continue to rise as skepticism and myths about vaccinations dominate a lot of public discourse. <music> 64-year-old Mr. Saki was a COVID-19 skeptic, at least until he contracted the virus. He spent three weeks on a ventilator in a COVID-19 ICU. We were surprised that things like this could happen to us. Uh, so on, on, the, on the other hand, uh, <coughs> we were supposed to be doing it, and we were not doing it. Once we are alive, we must enjoy, drop some small beer, chew meat, Hello. Yeah. Uh. There are more Mr. Sakis. People like him helped the spread of the virus last year. With Accra being an epicenter of COVID-19 in Ghana, health workers in a regional hospital have been very busy managing cases and caring for the seriously ill. I have come to the Greater Accra Regional Hospital where Ghana's first two cases were admitted and treated. Dr. Emmanuel Ahiable is head of the COVID-19 response team here. On the 12th, when the, uh, the, the president, that's it, the Minister of Health, mm. the team announced that Ghana has recorded the first two cases, we were all scared, you know, anxious. We are asking ourselves, where are they going to send a case to? Okay. So Friday when we came, on the uh, 13th, when we came, we were looking at each other's faces. Until around 11.30, we heard the siren of an ambulance coming towards the, the treatment center, the isolation center. He was wearing the, the, the PPE, full one, the patient coming out. It was there we all realized that it was, it, was a, it was a reality, the reality set in. Mm -hmm. So like I said, nobody was willing to go and receive the patients because psychologically we were not prepared. Okay. But as knowledge about managing the virus improved across the world, the situation in Ghana also improved. Only a more transmissible and deadly strain, B1-1-7, which was first observed in the UK, will take over as a dominant variant, putting pressure on a country's already overstretched facility. As the cases got down, people were not somehow adhering to their protocols because People thought that the disease is moving gone, so no use of face mask, no use of contact, um, uh, physical distancing. People were, pure, were poorly washing their hands with soap and running water. And then we had a new variant. So the new variant, which is more virulent, you compound it with um, poor adherence to safety protocols, and you're going to have a surge. <laughs> Even before the health facilities felt the real pinch of the second wave, a new dimension of the virus was emerging. Post-COVID complications, we call them. Oh yes, we have had several patients. Sometimes you can get COVID, your test may turn negative, but you may still come back to the hospital with severe lung disease, severe respiratory complications, or severe cardiovascular complications simply because we've had COVID in recent times. So we have seen this clearly. And there are some people who have survived the COVID but died from complications of COVID. The night of the day I was discharged, in the night, I felt like using the washroom. And uh, I went to the, I, w I tried to wake up. Then I realized I couldn't. Uh, my lower part, couldn't move, so I thought it was a joke. So I have to get out of the bed, crawl to the bathroom, and use the washroom and come and sleep. I just thought maybe it's just something. And when it was uh, in the morning, uh, it got worse. So I have to call a friend who came around and have to uh, spend time, go to the, go to work, come back, 
and check up on me. Come uh, sometime, come check up on me. Do he helped me a few things, and then it was very terrible. So for about two weeks, I couldn't walk without uh, the support of somebody or uh, clutches. This was indeed worrying, but by this time, activity on the international stage gave hope of what was almost impossible a year ago. A raft of working coronavirus vaccines had been produced in a record eight-month period, beating close to every prediction of when the vaccines were to be available. We have no guarantee that any single vaccine now in development will work. The more candidates we test, the higher the chance we will have a safe and efficacious vaccine. Almost 200 vaccines for COVID-19 are currently in clinical and preclinical pre testing. The history of vaccine development tells us that some will fail and some will succeed. As the production of the vaccines in commercial quantities kicked in, the next thing was how to ensure equitable distribution of the drug among all countries in the world, regardless of their wealth. This is February 24, 2021, exactly a year and four days after a consultative meeting on funding for COVID-19 vaccine development was held in Geneva and Ghana is taking delivery of 600,000 free doses of the Indian-made AstraZeneca vaccines, making it the first country in the world to receive the jabs under the COVAX facility. our target of vaccinating 20 million Ghanaians by the end of this year. Through the National Vaccine Deployment Plan, our population has been segmented into four groups and this will determine which section of the population gets vaccinated at a particular time. President Ekufuado will back this by being the first person to receive the shots in the country together with his wife, the vice president and his wife, former president Mahama and his wife, Asantehene Otunfose Tutu II, members of Council of State, clergy, senior media practitioners and a host of other dignitaries all took their jobs on live TV. The goal for this public show to convince people that the jabs were safe. But did this succeed? Uh, I'm not prepared to take any vaccine now. Actually, prepared. I'm a health worker too. They've told us about the benefits of taking the vaccine, so I'm ready to take the vaccine. For me, I'm not really ready to take the jab as it stands now. I want to wait for a while, maybe two, three months, see the reactions from those that first take the job, then I'll see if it's okay then. Probably I'll make my mind. I'm not ready to take it because I don't even know if it's safe. We don't know the source and where it's coming from. It's not from us. This is Africa. We've heard on the news that they want to depopulate Africa. So how are we sure that this is safe? This is not part of their plan to depopulate us. Soon the vaccines were deployed for the first phase of the inoculation campaign with priority for health and security personnel. People aged above 60, media practitioners, among a few others in parts of the Greater Accra, Ashanti and Central regions. But opinions are divided over the safety of the vaccines. Several conspiracy theories had already gone ahead of the rollout, convincing people not to receive the jabs. Theories about the vaccines gained prominence on social media and eventually entered the church. Pastor Chris Oyakilome is a respected preacher with millions of followers. If you call yourself a Christian, a minister of the gospel, and you're going supervising churches to ensure they follow these guidelines, you are not a Christian. You never were. You're not a Christian. You never were. 
This is the truth. Read your Bible. You have deceived yourself all these years. And that's why now you can take on this kind of responsibility. I'm already preparing people for it by telling them that there's a new version of this COVID. They are waiting. They, they have the name already. It's been written down. COVID-21. All right? They know what they're doing. December 2020. Field hospital set up in each county. All right? January 2021. Full lockdown. Look at, look, at, look at the plans. I'm just reading the plans to you. This is from a document, okay, that leaked out. Listen to what they said. They don't even, they don't even care. They have it and they, they are planning on doing it. He talks about how COVID-19 vaccines and masks actually usher in the mark of the beast. A reference to an apocalyptic passage from the book of Revelation that suggests that the Antichrist will test Christians by asking them to put a mark on their bodies. But founder and leader of the Action Chapel, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, has a different opinion. People are sending me all kinds of conspiracy theories and lies about the vaccine. Meanwhile, we take other vaccines, polo and uh, what do you call it? Um, yellow fever, all di di different kinds of vaccines. We we've been taking it for years. What is the difference between that and this? Oh, this one is too quick. This one was done too early. Church, vaccine is vaccine. I have faith. But taking the vaccine is also common sense. And it's also wisdom. Taylor is a member of Christ Embassy. So everyone in the church may have his or her opinion um, with regard to the, to the disease, right? But personally, I don't believe in the, in the virus. I don't also believe in the vaccine. I realize that the composition of this vaccine contained mRNAs, which is messenger ribonucleic acid, which actually um, tends to alter the DNA of, of, of an individual, right? But these are hidden truths in the field of, of, of health. As the anti-vaccine theories gain popularity on social media, there have been conscious efforts from other churches to dispel misinformation. The Church of Pentecost, in a press release on Sunday, February 21, 2021, encouraged members to get vaccinated, stressing religion and science are not necessarily in conflict. But there are some others whose skepticism fall out of religious beliefs. I believe this is just an attempt by some tech giants to distort the world order in order for it to favor them. It, it, brought, it, 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 was, it gave a kind of boost to these tech giants. I have come to Choco, a community which lies some 200 meters from the coastline of the Atlantic Ocean. It's almost midday, and at this food joint, these people are having another discussion about vaccines.
With close to 90,000 confirmed cases of the virus and more than 700 deaths in Ghana, the attainment of herd immunity depends on the successful inoculation of about 20 million people in the country. The achievement of this ambitious target is tied to the confidence people have in the jabs. High-profile personalities taking the shot on live TV was not enough. About a kilometer east of the Choco Township is another coastal community, Koliena. The reactions to the vaccines are very interesting. Vaccine hesitancy is not new. Reference is made to the infamous Qatar incident in America which involved polio vaccines in 1955. These are not life. You see, well, the polio incident is different. I'm sure you are referring to the Qatar incident, incidents of the 1950s or so, or I think earlier than that. 55, a year of anxiety and triumphs. A major medical hurdle was crossed with the discovery by Dr. Jonas Salk of the anti-polio vaccine. Even though approval for Jonas Salk's polio vaccine was not in a record eight months like COVID-19 vaccines, licenses were hurriedly granted to several drug companies, including Qatar Laboratories, to make the vaccine. The very day news broke that clinical trials were successful after close to four years of research. About 165,000 doses of Qatar's shots went out. Not only did some people injected with a tainted vaccine get sick, but some who got the vaccine went on to infect family members and neighbors. The U.S. government ordered the Qatar vaccine to be withdrawn on April 27. But damage had already been done. The vaccine had paralyzed or killed 25 children. So yes, people are probably right to be apprehensive given that these vaccines were produced hurriedly. But what vaccines do we have and what does the science say? Immunologist with the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens, Dr. Yao Bidiako, explains. People should remember, vaccination is risk-benefit. The risk of getting COVID-19 disease and dying far outweighs, at this point, any risks associated. I would happily get fever for a day and know that I will not get COVID-19 than say, oh, because of that one-day fever, I won't get the vaccine and I'll just take my chances of cold. At least so far, it protects against severe disease. It protects me from getting sick if I got infected with SARS-CoV-2. Well, is just efficacy enough? So if I give you a vaccine, you have a chance that you are protected. There's also a chance that you may not be. I cannot look into your face and say, Manuel, you are protected. And then my friend here is not. So we lump all of you together as if you may not be protected. We know that the proportion will be protected anyway. So the only thing that is different in emergency use is that we do it quickly. We have not um, bypassed any safety or efficacy standards that we would normally look out for. But how does the absence of clinical trials of the vaccines in Ghana affects their safety. Oh, do they ask the question that was it tested on a Ghanaian? Because paracetamol has never, no clinical trials of paracetamol have been done in Ghana. Right? It's a very short-sighted view. We need to encourage ways to clinical trials in this country. But safety trials don't necessarily need to be done everywhere. Safety trials, you know, once a, a, the vaccine has been tested in, in UK, in Brazil, in South Africa, and has been proven, found to be safe, we don't have to necessarily worry about its safety among a Ghanaian population. 
data from the Ghana Health Service shows that 1,050 people out of a total of 450,000 who had been vaccinated as of March 16, 2021, showed side effects which were mostly fevers, headaches and muscle pains. But news of blood clotting among a few people who are taking the AstraZeneca jabs is taking center stage. The, the blood clot issue that currently 12 European countries are suspended, in my opinion, all those countries are completely overreacting and are putting themselves in danger. The WHO today released a statement saying they find no evidence of a link between the vaccine and clotting. The European Medical Regulatory Agency, the same thing. No regulatory agency who has looked at this so far has found any link. So far in the UK, over, I think it's currently over 10 million doses of AstraZeneca, probably even more, have been administered. They've recorded maybe 20 people with blood clots. The frequency of blood clots among vaccinated people is even lower than in the general population under normal circumstances. It's the analogous to getting a vaccine, walking out and being hit by a car and saying that the vaccine caused my car accident. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, the most sophisticated research conducted by local scientists is the genome sequencing of the virus. This was conducted by a team from the West Africa Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens at the University of Ghana just to know more about the virus. The research capacity in this country is largely dependent on grants that are from overseas. So we don't have much, if any, support for our research activities from our own government, which limits our ability to advance our research. So all that you see, the work that we have tried to do, the seroprevalence testing, the sequencing, is all funded. It's all money that we have repurposed from grants we had got to do other things. I hope that this event will highlight the need for sustained investment, government investment in research in this country. But with a vicious virus like COVID-19 spreading quickly, health authorities are thinking what could be the alternative to the vaccines we have in their current state? And I, I was asking, what's the alternative? The sure way of assuring that people are immune is either natural, but that one in, in that case you are prepared to have more people dying, or artificial. Artificial is a, is a vaccination. In Ghana, people who take COVID-19 vaccines are issued cards as a proof of vaccination. For many vaccine skeptics, this is a cue of the mark of the beast. They predict that soon, people will be forced to show their COVID-19 vaccination cards before they can access public services or even travel. By November, COVID-19 and COVID-21 vaccines become mandatory. This is their plan. By December, COVID passports change name to health passports and become accepted as the normal way of life. Libara Seko Manta Baranadios. Much as this assumption is false, the COVID-19 passports may become mandatory, and this is why. If, if you are not vaccinated, it's like you have the yellow card. You're going to go to a country like um, Singapore, South Africa. The first thing they'll tell you is not even the visa. They say a yellow card. So no yellow card, don't try. <laughs> Do you understand? And I think to make a lot of sense that, I mean, how, you, I need to be fully protected. So bring the evidence that you are, you, are, you, are, you are immunized, you are immune. The Ghana Health Service issues about 2,000 yellow cards every week. These are mostly to people traveling out of the country. Now, it cannot be overemphasized that the success of COVID-19 inoculation in Ghana is hinged on herd immunity. It is important to, for us that not until we get a critical mass of people who are vaccinated, for which reason we get what we call population immunity. With every passing day that people refuse to take the vaccines, the situation gets worse. The WHO for the Africa region had in the middle of March predicted the possible discovery of new strains of the virus within the continent as the Easter festivities beckon. In reaction to this, immunologists at WACBIP 
Dr. Yao Bediakon believes 2021 Easter festivities should be suspended just like they were in 2020. There's no reason why we should relax at all. Um, if we relax, we risk having another Christmas uh, situation on our hands. There's no one watching or listening right now who is older than science and a science of vaccination. So are the disbeliefs and myths about vaccination they hold outdate all of us. So you are not alone if you doubt or resist vaccination. Your ancestors did, with myths and superstitious arguments that cost them their very lives. Get the jab. We are not safe until everyone is safe.